Hey guys, Tony here, rolling with the Bullens. So, today I want to touch base about a question I get asked all the time. Well, a few questions I get asked all the time. And this comes from fans of the channel, people who find out that we meet in public, that find out that we are full-time RVers. It's always the same set of questions. It's either why, <laughs> why are you a full-time RVer? Uh, that's what you get mostly. Why would you live that way? But uh, a lot of people who are always asking new or used, that is the biggest question. New or used rig, what rig should I buy? What rig do you recommend for us? Uh, should I go out and buy this big, you know, this rig here? Well, this is what my response is to that. Go out and buy the biggest RV you can find. Go out and you know, sell a kidney, purchase a million dollar RV, live, you know, RV park fabulous, be the talk of the RV resort, uh, so-and-so, the biggest RV on the frickin' block in the RV resort. That's who you want to be. <laughs> no, that's not what I suggest. What I suggest is figure out a rig that works for you, whether it's new or used. If your budget allows you to buy new and you want to deal with a brand new one, take the hit, that's totally your prerogative. That's what you want, go for it. But there's also people who have a smaller means and they're concerned whether or not they should buy a brand new RV and go into debt and buy a brand new RV. Now, my suggestion is do not go into debt and go beyond your means and beyond your budget to purchase an RV just so you're the talk of the RV park. Who cares what the rest of the people think of your rig? If you like your rig, your rig's in decent shape. Um, it's habitable for you. <laughs> you know, you don't have any leaks. It's not falling apart. You don't have the sidewalls waving at you going down the road. Then it's a decent RV. And here's the other thing about it. It's yours. Who cares what everybody else thinks? The only thing I will tell you is if you're going to live full-time RV, there's what's called a 10-year rule out here. So if you got a rig that's older than 10 years, you do run into the occasional, it's hard to find an RV park or resort to go to because your rig's year, which I think is a very stupid rule because I've seen some coaches out here that are way beyond the 10-year rule that are still beautiful coaches, beautiful RVs, very well-kept recreational vehicles. And I think it's unfair and kind of, judgmental personally now but just to be aware of that that you know that's something that could happen to you when you do purchase an older rig if you want to live full time so keep that in the back of your mind before you make your purchase the other thing is you know when you buy a big fancy rv yeah okay it's nice it's shiny and everybody likes shiny i like shiny but at the end of the day, shiny's not always the best way to go brand new's not always the best way to go my personal opinion to tell anybody out here who wants to go full-time RV, buy what you can afford. Buy what you can pay cash for. It. It's not going to wipe you out. Buy what's going to, you know, uh, suit your needs. Nobody else's. It's, it's just going to suit your needs. Um, if you're not sure if you need a little dinky rig or a, or a bigger rig, you know, try to find you a rig that's going to accommodate all the things you plan on bringing with you in full-time RV life. Now, you're going to learn after you've been full-time RV life for a while, I don't need this, I don't need that. So the downsize process is going to start over again. You're going to start downsizing again. We've been full-time now over two years, and we still downsize. Matter of fact, we were just going through our bays the other day, getting rid of things that uh, we've carried from <laughs> a Class A motorhome over to the fifth wheel. And, you know, it's still things that we haven't touched from the time we were in the Class A when we originally went for uh, full-time. And, you know, it, it, sometimes it's nice to get rid of those things and donate them in different areas when you decide to go through there. Uh, we usually donate our stuff at, like, Goodwills and things like that. Or even, uh, what's the other one there? There's another charity. I uh, can't, can't think of the name of it right offhand. But we find a charitable box, and we donate either clothing items uh uh, you know, kitchen items and, th and things like that. Things that we just really have no use for. And you're going to find when you when you purchase your first rig, it's not going to be your last rig. It's just not. You're going to purchase a rig that's going to have all this stuff, and then you're going to find out either you don't need that, and but it's and you're going to you're going to switch up to something else. That's just the nature of the beast when you live full time RV. You're going to have multiple rigs over your course of your full time life, and 
so to answer the question, what is the perfect rig? There is no perfect rig. It's whatever suits your needs and whatever suits your needs for the now. And that's what I tell, I tell people is purchase, you know, things that doesn't hurt your pocket so much. Uh, you know, if you're not sure how RV systems work, you can pay people. You can pay a mechanic, an RV service mechanic. He can go walk through your RV uh, and, you know, tell you what's wrong with it and what you should have addressed, especially if you're buying from a dealer. So let's just face it, because most dealers, even private sellers, when they're trying to sell you something, they're not probably always going to be the most forthcoming about what's wrong with that rig they're trying to sell you because at the end of the day they want your money so you need to pack yourself a little bit of knowledge you need to do your research on that particular model that you're looking at look for you know reviews on it see if there's any you know major issues that this thing's been recalled for um, you know go to some of the forums for that particular model and brand they're all over the internet you can find them everywhere look and see for a lot of the problem areas that a lot of people have had and expressed concern and you know issues like that that's going to be your best friend that way when you do go looking for a coach you can actually look and see if that coach that you're looking at and thinking and considering of purchasing has that issue or if that issue has been corrected so those are the kind of things i try to tell people when they want to know what the perfect rig is so there's just really not, and as far as new and used, it really comes down to your personal choice, personal preference. Um, if you want to buy the brand new rig, hey, have at it. If you want to buy a used rig, have at it. I've seen people out here with million dollar coaches that has just the same problems that I have with my modest purchase. Um, you know, our rig was in the 20, 20 some thousand dollar range, but you know, it really doesn't matter what somebody pays for it. I've seen, like I said, coaches that are over a million dollars still have problems. I've seen guys with coaches and, and recreational vehicles, RVs, travel trailers, fifth wheels, that come in, you know, fifteen to two thousand dollars, you know, very comfortable price point for some people with a little bit of elbow grease, and that coach is just as good as that million dollar coach and just as good as mine. Um, so therefore I don't really think that, you know, there is a perfect rig that's going to suit everything. And there's, I don't think there's, there, everything's too cookie cutter is really what I'm boiling down to. So, I mean, there's going to be good points of this rig. There's going to be good points of that rig. It boils down to your preference, guys. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is just just live within your means. Don't, don't worry about what everybody else is going to think about your rig. You know, if you like your rig, you pay $2,000 for your rig and you're just happy as you can be. Everything works in there. It suits your needs. Who cares what everybody else thinks? If you're the guy who bought the million dollar coach, everything works in there and it works for you. Who cares what people think about you for buying that big rig? Because there's a stereotype either you know, from the people who have a lot of money to the people who don't have a lot of money. There's no middle ground there. These people think that either you're beneath them or you're above them. Or, and I think it's just a bunch of biased crap, to be honest with you. We're all RVers out here, but sometimes a lot of people kind of forget that. Even like these resorts, you know, you got the guys with the million dollar coaches, some of the nicest people in the world. They don't look down because you have a uh, you know a lower end coach than what they have, but then again you're going to run into that kind of people out here as well. Oh well, my coach cost a million dollars. How much did you pay for yours? You're going to run into that everywhere. It's kind of like the same thing with your you know you have a car or your house in a neighborhood. Oh, well, so and so's house looks so much better than so and so over here. Well, so and so over there might have a little bit more money than so and so over here. Doesn't mean the person who lives in this this place here is, is you know of a less of a person than the person over here unfortunately that's the society we live in and that's something that's going to have to change on a completely different level um but you do run into those stereotypes out here that some RVers think they're better than you guess what don't associate with that people but to let somebody else steer you into going beyond your means and going in deep in debt on an RV just so you can keep up with the Joneses I do not recommend that whatsoever because like I said at the end of the day RVs are all the same they're going to give you a problem it doesn't matter how much money you spent on it how little money you spent on it you're going to spend more money on it so it's really just you know less of the two evils what you can deal with it's your preference don't let anybody else push you into going deeper than debt than what you need to. Like I said, my suggestion is if you have some money sitting around and you purchase what you can afford, what's in your budget. That way you don't overextend yourself. Um, you know, 
I see this time and time again out here since we've been full time is people who have never camped, never owned an RV before. They go and basically listen to what a dealer tells them to go purchase all this, that, and the other, all these extended warranty kind of things. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're spending all this extra amount of dollars on all this stuff. And, you know, really, it doesn't it doesn't really benefit them at the end of the day. They're just out more money and they're in deep on this, only to find out that RV life is not for them. Uh, oh, I didn't realize that I had to touch my own, you know, stinky slinky. I, I didn't realize I had to go up on my roof and, and clean this off, uh, you know, and, and seal my windows and seal around my taillights and, you know, seal around all the little markings on the side of your V, only openings, you know, you got to go around and seal that up with silicone because if not, water damage is not your friend with an RV. And see, that's the other thing. When you come into this, you can spend all this extra money on this million dollar coach. It still needs the same services that this fifteen dollars to $2,000 RV needs. You guys are going to spend the same $15 for a tube of this silicone sealer to, to basically address the same issues. So it really doesn't matter what RV you elect to buy. If it suits your needs, perfect. Don't let anybody else steer you any other direction. Biggest thing is do your research on whatever model that you're considering and, and come into a dealer or into a private sale situation with as much knowledge as you possibly have and can obtain before you get there to work either a better deal for yourself or not get screwed in the long run or make the wrong purchase and buying a rig that needs a lot more work than what it's actually worth. And you know, you got things like, um, you know, RV Trader uh, that's got values, they got RV values. Uh, uh, there's, there's places you can look all over the internet, find the values of these. And like I said, the forums are going to be your best friends, guys. Do your research, have it in your head, what an RV is worth, and don't pay too much. If you just got a bunch of money you like giving everybody else for the windfall for them, sweet. Thanks a lot. We appreciate that, too. Some of the guys that they got millions of dollars in their pockets. Um, but like I said, guys, really, don't let... You know, the keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing, weigh your financial means. Just buy what you can afford, live with what you can live with, and enjoy RVing, enjoy life. Because life's too short to worry about if you're in this click or that click. All right, guys, so hopefully this helped a little bit explain to you how I feel about, you know, buying either the biggest rig on the market or a modest rig. It's really down to your preference. And my preference is I tend not to buy brand new because I don't want to take the hit and I have to wait for service that I don't always get done because more than likely you're still going to put the money into it, like I said in the previous video. But like I said, guys, hopefully this helps. And, you know, like I said, just don't let other people's decisions and you thinking, you know, what other people think of you or however about your purchase in your RV. Do not let that weigh upon you when you purchase your RV. Just make sure you get a good deal. Make sure you get a livable RV. And one that you are happy with. Who cares with anybody else? And stay happy and live your life, guys. This is Tony. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.